subreddit if you don't know it is a subreddit on reddit <laughs> where people write in their stories and asking if they would or are the asshole in the situation they're describing and then reddit is going to vote on if they're the asshole or not and kind of just give their opinion to it so i love that subreddit i love being on it i actually have another channel which you'll find in the description box <laughs> and I've read a couple of these stories on there as well which um, went really well but I really want to have more of a podcast style an ASMR podcast because my channel is more like the normal ASMR and on this channel I really want to focus on just the pure <laughs> clicky whispers and um yeah not do any other triggers or anything so little um welcome to the channel little explanation i am gonna be reading and with the asshole stories there's probably gonna be um some relationship advice something like that best stories of reddit on here <laughs> um yeah and each week i'm gonna pick a topic and that's what we're gonna talk about sorry for this like long intro but i want to get this like off my chest <laughs> so every week every sunday to be exact we're gonna be here and we're gonna do this as a podcast <laughs> so i hope you're gonna enjoy this grab a drink i have my drink of the day which is my starbucks coffee so actually starbucks um to make these at home but a Starbucks cup <laughs> that's a good color by the way for iced coffee <laughs> and yeah I'm gonna be talking about these stories obviously I'm gonna read them out for you and then we're gonna talk about it <laughs> I am planning to have um people visit this podcast it feels weird saying it's a podcast because I don't know again
has this party for the sake of my daughter, which is asinine. She's turning three. She has no friends there, in as much of as a toddler's friends, and no concept of birthday parties in relation to time or space. They say they have to do this because my daughter will get upset not being the center of attention, which is also asinine. I don't know that word actually. <laughs> I've begged them not to do this. This is the first real birthday my niece will have in three years, and it's a recipe for resentment. She's a great kid, super sweet and kind, but she's at the age that she's eager to grow up, and it's not fair to her to deal with baby shit on her birthday. She's going, got maybe two birthdays left until she's too old for grandma and grandpa parties. <laughs> Let her have this. Both me and my sister have tried to get them to back down. They blow my sister off, saying she's bossy and needs to learn how to share, and they blow me off by giving me the inverse. I try to compose as compromise, like have a little sidebar cake in the kitchen while the other kids are occupied, go to the zoo another day, but no dice. They just ignore me and keep sending me updates on what they have planned. I'm at my wit's end. I told them, Point blank, I will not participate, and they're basically going to try and call me my bluff. So now I've told them I'm going to have to reschedule the trip to a more neutral, massively inconvenient time if they don't knock it off. Of course, this has become a whole thing. I'm trying to prevent them from having a relationship with my daughter. I'm being selfish and implying I expect them to double their efforts to give my daughter her own party. Then it's that I'm being a pushover and letting my sister bully me so I sulk about it and hold it over their heads. I don't know. I'm just getting stressed about this and this is the shit that they always pull. They're now latching on me to be vocal about the fact rescheduling is going to suck for me as trying to act like a major. But honestly, I was just hoping they'd see they're being dramatic, stupid and stop plans that will ruin my niece's birthday. They say I'm being dramatic over just one day, but it's a huge bummer. I think I came up with a reasonable compromise. They just don't care, but maybe they're right. Am I the asshole? Here's an added. Added for clarification, niece was told about the plans and gave a less than thrilled, I guess it's okay, which my parents took as an enthusiastic green light. Sister and I had the sidebar to discuss a separate thing for niece at our expense. Parents caught wind of this. We told them, yeah, we can take care of this this year. To which they responded by sending out invites to niece, friends, and parents. We even tried to give them a chance to change plans to an all-ages location, the nearby zoo with an event space, which they shot down. They responded by lecturing us of the addicts of suits, which is rich for a lot of reasons. Added to. So Fox is singling out my mom here. This is very much a joint effort between both my folks, but if anything, my dad is the architect. Alright. <laughs> the overall vote on this thread was not the asshole. I am going to read you the top comment. Top comment is not the asshole and cancel the trip. Your great aunt and an awesome mom. The next person said, not the asshole. I think it's incredibly sweet. You don't want your niece to lose their thunder. I can understand why they feel the desire to do a joint party, but they should have backed off once you declined. She's your daughter. Um, my verdict, my <laughs> unasked for um, unqualified verdict would as well be not the asshole. I think it is a very, very fair thought of the mum, I, I don't know if it's a mum or a dad, to say that their daughter like, is too young to even understand the concept of a birthday party, to know what it's about, and that the niece who's 12 would much rather prefer to have her own birthday party, and if I think back to when I was 12, I would have like no hated nothing more than to celebrate my birthday with like a three-year-old. I feel like the age difference here is like too big. I get that celebrating birthdays together can be like an easy way to 
was fine with my mom coming over to see the boys and she said yes not even five minutes after my mom shows up she's asking me why the kitchen is so dirty today i wonder why every little thing she had something to say about she was bothered about the twins playmat still on the floor from where they were going tummy time earlier asking when was the last time somebody took out the trash the same morning but when you have two shitty newborns the bins fill out quickly <laughs> i'm used to this with my mom because she's always like cleaning cleanliness <laughs> but i told her she needs to knock it off immediately so there we were in the living room chilling with the kids by the way eddie went to, to go take a nap before my mom came over and woke up an hour later so she went out to greet my mom the three of us were talking little man got all fuzzy so eddie took him from my mom to feed him his crying woke up my other son in my arms so i'm trying to rock him back to sleep eddie took one to their room so that the way neither bothered the other while we are trying to calm them down my mom asks me if eddie is always this rude i asked her what do you mean she says because eddie didn't bother to get up once my mom got there but i told her well what do you expect she just had a c-section barely four weeks ago and here we have two newborns with a fresh set of lungs to look after we text we take turns getting a nap every chance we get but accordingly to my mom it's not right since we were having company so i told her well you weren't here to see eddie you were here to meet my sons my mom still thought he the least she could have done was to show a little hospitality eddie came in again when she was saying that we both said we exhausted at least we were nice enough to let her come see the kids even when it's been a long day she still got defensive saying she knew she was meeting her grandkids but thought we'd at least tidy up get ready for her to be here i'm already irked and really didn't have the energy for this and that's what i told her as if she would also if she won't stop whining about the little things and then please leave which is what she did but now she won't stop claiming i threatened her so poorly on a day that was supposed to be so memorable my mom is expecting an apology from me for ruining her first meeting with her grandkids and pretty much acting like an asshole not sure if there was a better way to handle what happened am i the asshole the overall reddit verdict was not the asshole and once again i think i'm replying <laughs> this mom is the no i don't know what the <laughs> what as a mom who has a kid because it's all she her kid the son wouldn't you fucking know how terrible terribly exhausting it is to be pregnant honestly i've never been pregnant i am not pregnant i am not planning to be pregnant in the new future but even i know how exhausting it is you mentioned that she had a c-section his best friend um eddie the mom and excuse me some people can't walk for like a really long time when they had a c-section depending on you know how many like stitches she got and like how well she took the anesthesia and stuff like honestly the, <laughs> she's a fucking champ of already being out of bed and like agreeing to meet her not even mother-in-law like what relation does she have to that mom other than she's like the grandma to her grandkids like what also i like he just mentioned that in like a side comment in the first sentence but it seemed like the mom didn't even like wasn't even happy about the like the pregnancy and stuff because the eddie the girl is his best friend or something so <laughs> like what did you expect like what do you mean i feel like she's one of those moms who had like a vision for her son to just like make this perfect little family in her head and the wife's like amazing and does everything for him and stuff so it's kind of like also i love the joint efforts and that they agreed on co-parenting even though you know they were friends it seems like they've got it all figured out like living in a house together taking care of the twins together it seems actually like an absolutely amazing agreement and it worked out perfectly so i don't know what the drama is with the mom and like honestly honestly no one no one can expect the house to be clean four weeks four weeks oh god four weeks after she gave birth to not just 
situation and there's nothing to be sorry for. She then told me at the end that she would send me with lots of extra food so we wouldn't have to spend much money on food that we probably need for something else. This honestly pissed me off but I bit my tongue and instead said thank you. My sister then asked for more chicken but she pronounced it a bit funny and this lady goes, no honey, it's pronounced chicken. <laughs> to which my sister tries to say again but pronounced it the same as before. She probably spent a good two minutes trying to get my sister to say it right and I could tell my sister was getting upset because she's already insecure about it. That's when his mom literally busts out in laughter and said, Oh my god, that's so cute. Did your mom never teach her proper English? I literally blew up on her and told her she was reeking of or er, 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 ignorance. There we go. And had been so grossly disrespectful since we arrived. She told me to get the fuck out and that I was not welcome back in her house. I stomped off and Jeff followed me yelling about how I was so out of line and that she was just trying to help and make conversation and how I was such a bitch for embarrassing him and speaking to his mother like that. I asked why he didn't stand up for us and he said he had just never been around people like us. Okay, poor Mexicans apparently. And I can't possibly expect him to choose me over his own mom when she was just trying to help. I told him since he wants to be so loyal to his mummy, he can just go fuck her instead and left. I have since retrieved multiple texts from mutual friends, some telling me I was out of line and some saying the other way around. Am I the asshole? Edit. There's a lot of people assuming I broke up with him. I haven't. Edit too. For the people asking why my sister is still having a hard time with English at that age, she suffers from dyslexia and ADHD, which already make her schooling ten times harder without a language barrier. And she can't understand English fine, but her grandma is off, and she gets hella anxious to speak it because she's been made fun of for her accent and pronunciations before. <laughs> oh god, um, alright. Not the asshole was the also the overall verdict on Reddit as well. This is this just also breaks my heart. Honestly, the thing I was like thinking about, like that's one hella good sister. She's seventeen, right? Being seventeen and standing up to the bullies of your little sister like that—that's just that's that's such a bold move, especially because she's like in love with this boy. It's her boyfriend. She obviously was like trying to make like a good impression on the parents. Like, I don't know, when I was 17, I was like lovesick, I would have done everything for the boy I like liked at that time. So for her to stand up, call this lady out in front of her boyfriend, knowing damn well that she could like jeopardize her relationship with the boy in that moment. That's just such a badass move for me. I don't know. You go, girl. I love that she's standing up for a sister like that, even though she's quite young. So, I don't, that's just awesome. I love that. She seems like an amazing, amazing sister. Also, can we talk about how fucking hilarious the story is that he told that guy that if he wants to be so loyal to his mummy, he could just go fuck her instead. <laughs> this lady, this girl, she has a fucking pair of tits on her, I tell you that much. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Top comment is, not the asshole, his mom is a racist, and apparently he is too. And elitist, don't forget that. Yeah, to be honest, it does sound to me like the mom is a bit of a, like, rich mom, like, living in the suburbs, her husband is a lawyer, and, um, yeah. She just stays home and bakes apple pies all day and has, is really bored and has to complain about everything. To be honest, my mom's kind of like that. Um, not about like the rich at home mom, but my mom loves to complain about everything. I think this, my mom, I'm talking about my mom. I think this lady has like no, <laughs> she has like no life and she needs to be, make her life interesting. But like bitching about everything and making a drama out of everything and this kind of like reminds me of that but also the audacity I like on this lady now I'm so scrambled sometimes I'm sorry 
girl you stood up to her that's like actually amazing you are really really brave i love that for you you sound like an absolutely amazing amazing sister forget his mom probably forget that boyfriend because parents like that you can probably check the boyfriend in the church as well especially if he was like siding with the mom at the end so yeah it's kind of, it would be kind of interesting to see um where that progresses if she's gonna break up with him but you know it's kind of very odd <laughs> other comment is it sounds like that family is a bit out of touch with the reality not the asshole that experience must have been so uncomfortable and op replied to that saying exactly i was like ma'am how have you never seen a mexican or low-income person before like what the fuck i mean i kind of got the gist his mom was a little judgmental from the brief convos i had with her but i was honestly so surprised before my boyfriend had never made comments to me like this before let alone talk to me the way he did that night yeah the next person says something like i said not the asshole, I love your shiny spine. There's so many stories here of women who don't know their worth and accept the weirdest bullshit from their mother-in-laws. Good for you to shut down that right away and recognize a mama's boy. You don't have to be polite about racist assholes. Yes. Someone commented, I know, right? Only OP's only 17 and already knows her and her family's worth. I'm impressed. Well done, OP. Not the asshole. Yeah, I feel like that comment was like way too low because that should have been like your top comment. <laughs> I feel the same. You go, girl. Okay, anyway, next story. <laughs> I'm excited today. I'm like really. <laughs> Yay. I could do this forever. Okay. <laughs> the next story is going to be a bit more interesting, I hope. It is. Am I the asshole for being a bit late to meeting my boyfriend's parents for the first time? My boyfriend, 22 male, and I, 21 female, have been together since March. Because of a few different reasons, this weekend was the first time I met his family, his mom, dad, and two other brothers. They arrived last night and stayed with my boyfriend at his house, with the plan being I'd meet them earlier today. I coach an ice hockey team for, from 12 to 2 on Saturdays, so I told him that it, it would have to be after that. We decided the best thing to do would be for him to get to my house with his family, let themselves in and wait there because he lives about 35 minutes from me, and it would be easier than them coming once I'd already finished. I have four more crewmates and we also have a dog who I told my boyfriend would need feeding when he got there, which he didn't have an issue with. My roommates were all out. My coach finished and I received a call from my local pharmacy saying my prescription was ready. So I decided to go there first as it's on my way home. There ended up being a huge line and I didn't get home until three, about 3.30. Three my boyfriend didn't mind at all. He'd enjoyed looking after the dog and he got to spend time with his family. But his mom was, was off with me all afternoon, eventually telling my boyfriend I was clearly unreliable and that I treated him like a servant because I told him the dog need feed it, needed feeding. I wasn't late intentionally. Am I the asshole? Edit. I... It's a control drug. Couldn't have gotten it any earlier and needed it for today. Do you text with my boyfriend? Three years. Some of you need a hobby. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what to think about this. The overall verdict from Reddit was asshole. What an interesting. I feel like. Uh, I don't know. I feel like everyone sucks here, which is also an option. Everyone sucks. Um. Because, obviously, honestly, like, the mom, like, saying that she was unreliable and she treated him like a servant is like, what, where did you get that from? She was just, like, late to the meeting and it's, like, completely normal if you live with someone, if you're in a relationship with someone that you, like, also do something and it's not, like, like, no one could look at the dog. I feel like it's just such a normal request. I mean, she would have probably not have said anything if you would have said no, so it's kind of, like, weird. Um, but also it is kind of a bit weird that she uh, decided, or oh, yeah, it's, oh no, I oh know, we know it's a she, it's a bit weird that she decided to grab that prescription before meeting them. I mean, I get it, it was like on the way, but if you want to meet like the parents of your boyfriend, it's kind of a weird situation. You probably... Uh, if I was in this situation, I would have still gone, especially when I arrived at the farm. 
she said she needed it today, which is kind of weird because, like, she said before, like, the pharmacy told her her prescription was ready, so why didn't she, like, already plan with that? And you usually don't pick up a prescription on the day you need it, so it kind of seems a bit like an excuse to me that she might have added after she saw that, like, everyone thought she was the asshole. I don't know. I'm a bit... <laughs> thrown off by this, but I feel like you could have definitely done a little better, you could have definitely thought this out a little more clever, because if she ended up being back at 3.30, that is like an hour and a half, she's late, which you're not going to tell me you stood in the pharmacy line for like an hour and a half, I don't get it, um, so uh, if she would have been on time right after she finished at 2, she would have probably been there at 2.30 or whatever. She could have spent two or three hours with her parents in law, like soon to be, and then he could, she could have drove, driven down to the pharmacy again, picked up the prescription, and wouldn't have ever had a problem. I feel like that would have been the most level headed um, way faction. So, uh, a bit iffy, but also the mom is in wrong for judging her so, so badly. I feel like um, that judgment from the mom is like undeserved and this is like a bit a bit extra <laughs> so she's not completely the asshole but she definitely didn't do anything to accommodate the situation <laughs> um but yeah okay the top comment is you are the asshole the first time meeting his family and no you know they're waiting for you at your home and you decide to run an errand no mo wonder mom was jelly Someone said to her that picking up medications you need to live is not an errand. OP was on their last dose of controlled substance and couldn't pick it up the next day. That's completely different than just running to the grocery store and or grabbing dry cleaning. Ugh, I don't know. I'm still a bit iffy with that with the whole prescription thing and she couldn't pick it up on the other day. Like, wouldn't you like make sure that wasn't the other the case, if you need like a living, like a prescription to live, I don't know, I never like got prescriptions, so I don't know how we would be here, but so I don't want to assume anything, which just kind of seems a bit weird to me, she could have just literally like picked it up later, uh, okay, someone, the next comment is not the asshole, and this kind of interesting because it goes down a bit more on the pharmacy and, um, substance stuff and she said or well, the person said it's a, it's a girl <laughs> oh geez I'm saying she said not the asshole I am begging y'all to take a breath and step back because none of you seem to be informed of how prescriptions or pharmacies work OP is on a controlled substance they need to take to survive the way OP's prescription and countless controlled substances work is that they are not filled until the person is on their last or last to se second to last dose. That's actually interesting, I don't know that. This is typically done so people don't overdose, try to get high, sell, etc. The way OP's meds work, the refill order is sent in a week or two in advance, but the meds are not filled until the day before the last dose is used. So P has two choices, either risk being late to get the meds they need to live or go without the medication and risk a whole lot more if a P doesn't pick up and by P's admission they wouldn't be able to get the meds for at least a few days longer. The insurance company can see this and say, hey, you went without them for a few days, you don't really need these meds. So they weren't going to cover paying for them and give a P a thousand hurdles to jump over to get them back under coverage. There's also no telling what could have happened to your piece body if they didn't take their meds. There's no difference than if OP was diabetic and had to stop to get more insulin since they were on the last dose. It's not like OP was just picking up dry cleaning or going to quickly return a library book. They were getting something that depended on to live. Um, yeah. I, okay. Kind of interesting to me with the, like the last drug thing and stuff because... Assume again, but it sounds to me like a lot like the American system or Australian. I know it's a lot more strict in Australia as well, for example. Here in Germany, that would be like a lot different. So, I don't know. Um, still, I, I get everything what they said. I get that um, she needs her prescription or whatever to live. We don't know her condition. I actually haven't seen any comments from her. But then she would have known she would have had to pick that up that day and should have made her plans accordingly to that. So, 
always felt so ganged up on, but he's immediately dismisses it whenever I've tried to tell him that. Next comment is, no way at all, you're the asshole. He lets people walk the fuck all over you for two years. If you're the asshole, it's because you stayed this long. Seriously, does he have a penis made of magic and cocaine? <laughs> sorry, leave his ass. Leave his sorry ass. saying this right here OP this guy is telling you loud and clear how he feels about you he doesn't care and you're only important to him behind closed doors leave it's better to be alone than made to feel small and lonely all the time dump him tell him hell you might have to dump a lot of people before you find the person for you nothing is a waste if you've learned something from it yes 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 good comment <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> on team, not the, the asshole. And what the hell? Let's see, do dump him, dump his family, dump his friends, whatever. Go, you're like in university, you're doing great. Like, get a different boyfriend who's actually like appreciating you and he stands up for you. And then smack all these sorry asses, get your degree, show them what a girl boss you are, and make them feel really, really sorry for what they fucking said. Like, you better watch your mouth. Yeah. I don't know. Can't hear me say it anymore. I don't know why her mom is like, no, 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 you're like the asshole. You should have, you should have said that because, lady, you raised a good kid. You raised someone who stands up for her values. At least now, she didn't before. Not like, well, she boyfriend but I feel like she got enough advice from Reddit now I hope she's gonna leave her boyfriend actually let me see if there's an update because she posted this two years ago it'll be kind of interesting oh okay the account got suspended so certainly don't know if there's any update but I really really hope for her that she broke up with her boyfriend and found someone who is actually appreciating her appreciating her now and I hope everything turns to the best for her. That's my biggest wish for her. But yeah, you guys, this was the first episode of my podcast. <laughs> I'm really excited to make this a podcast. Um, I <laughs> I debated for the actual longest time how to call this because I had no ideas at all. And my boyfriend came up with a chili sesame. And then my friend and I, my friend works, uh, like studies, um, marketing and stuff we came up with the spicy stories thing and the whole like chili theme going around it so i really hope you like it do let me know if you have any ideas for any like topics that you want to hear if you want to see any like if you want me to do anything different i don't know do let me know what you think because i'm so excited and i honestly want to make this something really good for you guys as well not just for me so, do let me know your constructive criticism. I ultimately do want to change the background, because this is the background that I'm always using for my videos. I want to do something a bit more special, a bit more podcasty, but not there yet. <laughs> we'll see how it's going, and then I'm going to be able to maybe change a few things. But for now, this is what we're working with. I'm hoping to maybe, as I said, get some friends and family on this podcast, maybe some other people so we can debate in these stories together but I need to see how that's all going <laughs> but yeah if you have any crazy stories you want me to read um obviously if they fit the topic of the week I have made an, a special email which will be in the description box so you can check out um the email what was I saying so you can send it <laughs> your own personal stories and you know I, I'll be happy to read them and maybe give you my two cents of uh, unsolicited advice so who knows also I will be cutting all the episodes I'm doing down and giving you the single story updates just if you don't have time to watch the full thing and you're more interested to watch just like one of the stories they will all be available as 
single snippets after the full episode comes up on Sunday, so sorry, full episodes on Sunday, and then the stories will come piece by piece um, during the week in separate little things if you um, just want to catch up on like one story or you fell asleep and just want to catch up on like another story or something. So yeah, I'm excited. I hope obviously that this is something that is also exciting for you guys, that you're excited to have, that you're excited to watch. I know I personally love whispered stories, um, 